reacting to woke TikToks. And this time we are focusing on, I like to pick a theme for the woke TikToks that we react to. This one is uh, dating preferences are transphobic. So if the only reason you don't want to date someone boils down to the fact that they're trans, that's transphobia right there. Let's go over a couple of situations. So if you don't want to date a trans woman because you want kids, well, you better be keeping that same attitude with cis women who are infertile or that's transphobic. Often they do. Like, I think not being able to have kids is a deal breaker in dating for a lot of people, actually. So I don't know what world you're living in. Clearly a little demented world of your own. Um, but I think that is a deal breaker for a lot of people. Am I tripping? It's transphobia. If you don't want to date a trans woman because you're not attracted to trans women, I would absolutely love to know how you're able to identify correctly who is a trans woman on site 100% of the time because that is just impressive. I wish... How is that even the argument? So... I'm trans and oftentimes I can't necessarily clock a trans man because a lot of them look very passable. Um, but once I learn that they're trans, my attraction does disappear. That's not me trying to be a bad person. That's not me trying to be like whatever. It's just like, yeah, I'm not attracted to that. To some people, to a lot of people, the trans part itself is what is unattractive in a romantic partner. Not unattractive as a friend, not unattractive to have someone in your family, not like hateful. It's just like for a community that has a reputation of being sex pests, why are we still talking about if you don't date me, you hate me? And that's such a weird like incel, like virgin, never been laid, never been kissed. Never had interactions with the opposite sex. I bet money, first of all, that this person is attracted to women. It's probably like pressuring lesbians to have sex. Um, but it's just like, for a community that has a reputation of being sex pests, which really sucks for those of us that aren't, right? Like, if you're an actual trans woman, you're on medication that actually gives you no sex drive. Like, Actual trans women are not on camera talking about date me, you're a transphobic, fuck me, you're a transphobic. They don't even have sex drives. Um, I just, I can't. These people drive me fucking nuts. I wish I had that ability. I'd love to be able to have even more trans solidarity. And then also just a mouth being breather. super straight is the all lives matter of sexualities. It's not a real sexuality. It literally is just something that's made up to make fun of trans people and to hate on trans people. So, yes, yeah, super straights, I don't respect you and I don't respect that sexuality. Bye. So everyone has to respect your identity and your sexuality, but you're not willing to give that energy. Speaking of keep that same energy, like you said, keep that same energy respecting other people's sexuality. Like, the voice was so grating and the mouth breathing this and the, hey guys, if you don't date me, you're transphobic. Like, I can't. Like, if I was, <laughs> I don't care if this sounds crazy. I don't care if this is controversial. People already hate me. If I wasn't trans and my only perception of trans people were people like this, I would be transphobic. Proudly, I'd be like, oh, that's what that is? I'm anti that, as any rational person would be. Any rational person is looking at some person in a, in a camera talking about, hey guys, date me, oh, you're transphobic, and be like, I'm anti that. That's creepy. That's bizarre. <sighs> Next. Here is... um. <laughs> Again, a trans woman that it's not about looks and it's not about how far into your transition you are. However, I think here's my message to the girls. Let's set up a rule that until you're like at least a few years into a medical transition and a social transition and people start actually calling you she when you go out in public, just keep your mouth shut because no one needs if you're listening on audio. This is another just bowl cut, mustache. No female qualities whatsoever running his mouth about how lesbians have to like penis. Let's listen. Hi, I just 
don't want to attack you at all, but I think it may not be the best approach to give anyone a pass on the reduction of someone's body down to their genitalia. In this case, obviously the uh, dominant image of someone who is a lesbian uh, is someone who is not interacting uh, intimately with uh, phalluses in any context, but that is- Look at the play on words this freak is doing. It's about phalluses now. And I already know the argument's gonna be like, well, they use, you know, phalluses and like toys that are shaped like, okay. The argument is that they don't like men and they don't like penises and they don't have to. That is also not true. There are uh, artificial phalluses. There are silicone see, phalluses. See? There are um, organic phalluses. All of these things are things that lesbians can interact with. Yeah, because they like the feeling of penetration while not liking penises. That's that's it. I just I just cracked the code for you. I hope that makes sense to you. I'm sure it doesn't. Um, I don't blame any lesbians who look at the trans community or at least segments of it and are like, wow, these are literally just dudes pressuring us to have sex with them. How can anyone, any lesbian, look at this person talking and not perceive this person as a dude pressuring women to have sex with them? It's Any rational lesbian would do it, would look at it that way. I also think that uh, trying to frame it in this way is not super helpful because again and again, I think it's important to establish that trans women are not asking for access to, uh, specifically trans lesbians are not asking for access to cis lesbians' bodies. That's not what we're doing. We're asking to be taken seriously in our identities, which is as- By saying that lesbians have to like penis if it's attached to a trans woman? I can't. This person is sitting up here with a mustache talking about take me seriously as a lesbian. It's just like it gets to a point where it's like, what? I can't. As a lesbian and to be able to comfortably attend lesbian events, uh, all these sorts of things, which some events I have and I've been comfortable, some events I have and I have not. That's just kind of how it is. Um, That's your bad. If I forced myself into a bunch, a bunch of events from people who were involved in nuclear fusion and I had, didn't have anything to do with nuclear fusion, I don't even know what that is, I would probably feel uncomfortable too. If you were really a lesbian, why would you feel uncomfortable? The problem is you. The problem is no one around you. No one's probably ever been brave enough to tell you this in your life. Women don't owe you anything. They don't owe you anything. They don't owe you sex. They don't owe you viewing you as a woman. In fact, no one owes you that. No one owes you that. I think it's important to note that while um, I know many lesbians who've had very bad experiences with phalluses because they didn't know they were lesbian or going down to like some sort of uh, sexual violence against them, which I'm very empathetic for. I also ask empathy from those without the experience of being a trans lesbian to think about how being a trans lesbian- You're not a trans lesbian. Sorry. Don't care. Don't care. Sitting up here giving- <laughs> You look like Josh Peck. Like, you're not- you're not giving lesbian. Here's the circumstance in which I can look at a trans woman and be like, this is like a trans lesbian. If you have had full bottom surgery and you are in a relationship with a woman, I have no problem being like, I guess they're lesbians. <laughs> But like, I'm sorry, if you, if one person has a, a penis in the, in the situation and the person has a vagina, that's not a lesbian situation. Sorry, I don't care. Like, no wonder lesbians are always talking about this. It's just, it's just frustrating for them. Not dating trans people is not a preference. Not dating blondes is a preference. Not dating people who are, I don't know, shorter than five, six is a preference. 
Not dating people with brown eyes is a preference. Being trans is not a specific characteristic. Excuse me? Being trans is not a specific characteristic. Then what is it? But then again, to these people, it's just some abstract concept that means nothing and everything at the same time. So that makes sense that you wouldn't think it's a specific characteristic, but it very much is. It's very much a distinct part of, who, of what someone is, who they are, the role they play in society, their appearance, their fertility, all of it. And, and Amber... <laughs> I can tell this person isn't trans. This is just a Sarah coming up, taking up for trans people. Uh, if no trans person has said this, I'll say it. No, thank you. We don't need you. We don't need you, Gretchen. Don't need you to speak for us. Don't need you to speak for me. Making things worse. Thus, you can't label it as a preference. That's just called bigotry. No one's forcing you to date trans people, but don't cover up your discriminatory bias in the name of preference, because the logic doesn't. Everyone discriminates when they date. That's what dating is. But then again, these people typically be like poly, pansexual this, bi the Like maybe the disconnect here is that these people will fuck anyone in anything that comes their way because they can't really get anything so they'll take anything so they just assume anyone else will take anything too most people if you wake up and brush your teeth and have a job and wash your ass have at least a decent pick of who they would like to date have a few parameters you know have a few conditions doesn't mean they're picky but have a few things on their list of like has to be this and for most people a penis or a vagina is on that list I always say, not wanting to not date trans people is not transphobic. In my case, it just means you have bad taste because who the fuck wouldn't want to date me? But, you know, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> Carly, please don't speak for us anymore. We don't need you. Go home. Talk about what you want to talk about, like Bath and Body Works, the recent Starbucks cup you bought. Speaking of, isn't this one cute? I'm officially unleashing my uh, basic. I'm holding up a pink Starbucks cup. Next. All right. I will assume that you asked this question in the way that you really want oh my for it. So I will explain all the ways this person that looks like a ghost. it is okay. Let's say that you're attracted to women. Well, if you're attracted to women, then you're attracted to cis women, trans women without bottom surgery, and trans women with bottom surgery. If you're attracted to um, BJ... Then you could be attracted to a cis woman, a trans man without bottom surgery, a trans woman with bottom surgery, or a non-binary person, which depending on their... I'm not even following. This person is just like literally a freak. If you have to convince people to be attracted to a certain thing, there's an issue. And it's weird. Like, it, and people don't talk about this, but it's like... I don't know. If anyone was in my face trying to convince me, well, Blair, if you're attracted to men, that must mean you're also attracted to little people who are men. What if I don't want to date a little person? Not that I have anything against them. My best friend's a little person. But it's like, no. Being attracted to women doesn't mean you're attracted to all kinds of women, even if you include trans women in that. And I'm sorry, I don't think the fact that you're trans is the reason you can't get a date. Look at you. For audio listeners, it's like I've never seen someone look more ghostly. Like, is this person actually alive or am I hallucinating? And I'm sorry if I'm being mean, but I feel like pressuring people to have sex or date people is a lot meaner. I feel like that's a lot meaner than being like, why do you look like a ghost? It's giving evil ghost. It's giving demon. It's not giving Casper the friendly ghost. Moving on, because I really can't take these people. Hey, if you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.